Not every relic of the past offers a clear picture of what societies were doing a few thousand years ago. In today's video, you're gonna see the world's oldest computer, a never seen before Roman genre, and possibly the oldest known battery. Saxe Huaman, which I'm pretty sure I mispronounced horribly. Aside from being one of the most important archaeological sites, Sasuke is also an architectural marvel. A remnant of the wildly successful Inca Empire, the citadel was built some 1,200 feet above sea level, probably as a ceremonial center, although lots of researchers think it might have served other purposes. But that isn't the only mystery behind it. The biggest fascination with the site is the stone arrangement. The Inca people somehow figured out a way to stack the stones against each other that not even a sheet of paper can slip through. This ingenious style of construction remains unmatched thousands of years later, with even scientists failing spectacularly at replicating it. Whatever the secret sauce behind it, though, it's gonna keep the Citadel around for quite some time, just as it's been the case so far. The Olmec Colossal Heads Before present-day Mexico was born, the country's coastal parts were inhabited by the Olmecs, one of the earliest known civilizations in the region. The Olmec civilization lasted from about 1200 to 400 BC, and when it finally fizzled out, it left behind some interesting markers, the Olmec colossal heads being the most popular. About 17 of these majestic artifacts have been unearthed so far, and just as the name suggests, they're quite big with weights of up to 55 tons for the largest ones. Another interesting fact about the heads is that each one of them has unique features from the nose, eyes, and headgear. Because of this, some researchers believe that they were modeled after the Olmec rulers as some act of reverence. No one's really sure, though, and the lack of any pre-Columbian records about the heads means we might never find out why they're recreated. Lake Winnipesaukee Mystery Stone The oval black stone was unearthed in 1872 by some construction workers and has since become a popular archaeological find. Measuring only 4 inches tall and 2.5 and inches wide, it's quite tiny and it's such a surprise that it was discovered at all. But maybe the unique shape and engravings did play a role. While its surface doesn't offer that much space for some artistic expression, whoever the owner was did a great job at carving drawings into the stone. The stone's artwork features a small conical tent, a human face, an ear of corn, and inverted arrows, among other interesting drawings. Too bad, though. Seems like we'll never get to know the meaning behind them, as scientists can't even trace the origin of the stone. Plain of Jars In Laos, there's a large tract of land covered by thousands of jars whose purpose is still unclear. The jars come in all sizes, ranging from 3 to 10 feet in height and weighing as much as 14 tons. While it's known that the jars are between 1500 and 2000 years old, the question of who made them remains unanswered 100 years after the first detailed study. But there are a few theories. For the scientific community, there's some evidence that points to the jars having been used as funeral urns thanks to the presence of burial goods and, most importantly, human remains. The local Laos community, on the other hand, has a whole different explanation. According to legend, the jars are a creation of Chun Chiung, a kind of giant who lived around the area. Kun reportedly engaged in numerous battles, which he ultimately won. So to celebrate his victories, he made the jars and would use them to brew large amounts of rice wine. Pyramids of Egypt If there are artifacts that have fascinated researchers for years now, that is the Egyptian Pyramids, a physical representation of just how committed the ancient Egyptians were to the idea of an afterlife. While we certainly have a lot of material to work with as far as studying these ancient architectural wonders is concerned, there are still a lot of questions that remain unanswered. For instance, just how were they built? Given their gigantic sizes, the pyramids clearly required large quantities of material, especially blocks. Cutting, transporting, and arranging them might have involved a significant amount of work and ingenious techniques that we might never fully understand. Titan Rock Discovered in the late 17th century in the Taunton River in the U.S., the real origins of this boulder remain largely unknown. But it's not really the rock that's fascinating, but rather what's on it. Weighing about 40 tons, it's covered by dozens of petroglyphs that researchers have been unable to decipher for the past 300 years. Given the fact that these petroglyphs don't bear any resemblance to any other ancient writings across the U.S., they're gonna remain mysterious for years to come. Currently, all we have are theories about who could have been responsible for these unique writings. A lot of researchers are in favor of the suggestion that the petroglyphs might have been drawn by Native Americans, seeing as they're overwhelming evidence of their population around the area. Others aren't so sure and think the writings might have been drawn by foreigners, namely the Portuguese, Chinese, Phoenicians, or Vikings. The Anti-Kythera Mechanism 
The anti-Kytherian mechanism just goes to show how we underestimate the technological advancement of some of the ancient societies. It was a highly advanced piece of tech that some scientists refer to as the oldest computer in the world. Whoever constructed it was way ahead of his time, as evidence suggests that similar devices didn't pop up until thousands of years later. The artifact itself became a fascination in the archaeological community after being retrieved from shipwreckage in 1901 off the coast of Greece's Antikythera Island. Naturally, it had been severely damaged, which is part of the reason understanding its exact use was impossible for the longest time. With recent reconstructions, though, researchers believe they've finally cracked the code on this ancient piece of tech. According to the arrangement of the different gears, it was most certainly used to predict eclipses by keeping up with the movement of the sun and moon. Bighorn Medicine Wheel The Bighorn Medicine Wheel is not at all unique as there are a lot of similar structures across North America, with stones arranged in a circle to form a wheel-like shape with spokes. What makes the Bighorn Wheel unique, though, is its size. With a diameter of 80 feet, it's the largest structure of its kind, making it quite a spectacle in Wyoming's isolated Bighorn Mountain Range. But in all of its magnificence and popularity, no one's figured out yet who built it and why. It also seems to be quite old. Even the Crow people, who were the earliest in the area, claim to have found it there. But that doesn't mean they've completely disregarded it. To them, it's a sacred place, and they routinely drop by for prayers. Given the fact that some of its spokes align with the direction of sunrise and the rising points of some stars, some researchers believe that it might have been used as an observatory by whatever people that built it. The Kochno Stone Cup and ring decorations are fairly common at archaeological sites around the world, but the ones on Kochno Stone in Glasgow, Scotland are termed as some of the best. The stone itself is basically a slab, 43 by 26 feet first unearthed by Reverend James Harvey in the late 19th century. It would fall to vandalism several years later, which prompted a group of archaeologists to rebury it as a preservation measure. Studies on the stone just resumed recently in 2016, and the biggest focus is the cup and ring decorations. Scientists are simply trying to figure out what the idea behind them was, which could potentially help us understand the kind of life people around the area led 5,000 years ago. The Saqqara Bird According to some people, the aviation industry is much older than we think, going back thousands of years to ancient Egypt. And the evidence for this, apparently, is the Saqqara bird, a bird figurine made out of wood. It's been known to science since 1898, when it was uncovered during a tomb excavation in Saqqara village. The claim that it's a representation of the ancient aviation industry is definitely a stretch, but such wild theories are to be expected when there's no indicator of what that artifact might have been used for. Over the years, scientists have speculated that the bird might have actually been a religious symbol. This assumption stems from the fact that it was modeled after the falcon, a bird that was routinely used to represent a lot of high-profile Egyptian deities. Judakula Rock Considered a sacred place by the Cherokee Indians, Judakula Rock dates back to about 2000 BC, long before the colonization of North America. According to researchers, it features upwards of 1,500 petroglyphs, which is pretty intriguing. On the other hand, though, it's made studying the rock a bit of an uphill task, which, as you could imagine, leaves a lot to the imagination. I mean, what exactly were the Native Americans aiming for when they made the markings, and why are there so many of them on such a small rock? While these are certainly impossible questions to answer, for now, the rock also doubled up as a soapstone source given some of its extensive scars and depressions. However, according to the Cherokee people, some of the depressions are actually the footprint of a giant known as Juakula, who apparently landed on the stone as he jumped from one mountain to another. Roman Dodecahedron The first Roman Dodecahedron was first discovered in 1739, which seemingly set off a spree. Since then, some 116 of these objects have been discovered across the world in places such as France, Wales, Italy, Germany, and Spain. Granted, the size varies, but the structure is pretty much the same. Each one of them has 12 flat five-sided faces, and each face has a circular hole in it. To wrap up the structure, all the corners are marked by knobs. Despite all the years and all the samples that have been discovered, researchers still can't put a finger on the exact purpose of these odd objects. Yes, we know that most of them date back to the 2nd and 4th centuries, but that's really about it. Really, there's no mention of them from the records of that time. Several theories have cropped up over the years, though, with some researchers suggesting that the dodecahedrons might have been served as a religious purpose. They were also speculated to be fortune-telling devices, or even just valuable collections similar to paintings and jewelry. The Voynich Manuscript Perhaps one of the most mysterious and well-known artifacts, the Voynich Manuscript dates back to the early 15th century, created most probably during the Italian Renaissance. 
Honestly, it's just a book, albeit a rather complicated one. About 250 pages of a never-before-seen writing system with strange animal and plant drawings. So far, no one's been able to decode the hidden meanings of these writings, and it's unclear who could have written them. Not just that, the book's ownership is also a bit of a mystery. While it's a well-established fact that it was first owned by an alchemist from Prague called George Baresh, it's not clear how it ended up in his collection in the first place. Apparently, he just happened to bump into it one day when he was combing through his library. The manuscript would then later change ownership several times until it finally landed into the hands of Wilfred Voynich, a Polish book dealer in 1912, consequently getting its present name. Stone Spheres the Stone Spheres of Costa Rica consists of about 300 individual boulders on Cano Island's Dikis Delta. While they're mainly known for being remnants of the pre-Columbian past, their perfectly round shape has also been an important highlight. Also, the fact that there are so many of them shows serious commitment on the part of whoever made them, which means that these spheres might have served an extremely significant purpose. But scientists can't quite figure it out, and the fact that most of them have been moved around over the years makes it even harder. A popular theory, though, is that the spheres could have served as pointers to important places, such as chiefs' residences, and others also think that stones had something to do with the solar system, particularly the sun and moon. Dogu Dogu is the name given to Earth and human figures that have been discovered pretty much throughout Japan. To date, between 15,000 and 18,000 of these seemingly mysterious statues have been uncovered, so making them was probably a widespread activity in prehistoric Japan. The tiny figurines date back to the late Jomon period, over 2,400 years ago. Despite clearly being a big part of life then, there isn't much information or evidence of what the Dogu were used for. Inevitably, this has inspired all sorts of theories. Some researchers suggested that these oddly shaped tiny humans might have been used as healing symbols, while others think the figurines could have been important incorporations in childbirth and fertility. Finally, a few other researchers are of the idea that they had a ceremonial purpose, seeing as some of them were found near simulated burial sites. Now it's time for the day's best pick. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber, so if you come across a photo online and want to know more details about it, send it on over to us. Might even feature it in a future video. Levelois Technique Tools Levelois Technique Tools aren't exactly mysterious. According to researchers, the tools marked a major shift in the way our ancestors fashioned stone tools. Instead of the previous bigger and heavier tools, the Levalois techniques are the introduction of way smaller, sharper, and lighter tools that ultimately made life easier. This development is mainly associated with Africa and is thought to have spread to other parts of the world 125,000 years ago, as it was initially believed. At an Indian archaeological site called Atirampakam, researchers discovered a treasure trove of over 7,000 Levalois technique tools, all dating back to between 385,000 and 172,000 years ago. This means that human ancestors might have moved out of Africa several years earlier than it was initially thought, at least according to some researchers. According to others, though, the early humans in India could have developed the tools on their own without influence from those in Africa. A closer re-examination of the human ancestors in India will hopefully end the stalemate. Baghdad Battery We know that ancient civilizations had so much going for them as far as tech is concerned, but we just might never know the extent of this advancement. Case in point, the battery. As far as its modern version is concerned, the first real battery was invented in 1800 by physicist Alessandro Volta. But the Baghdad battery seems to challenge this notion, at least according to some researchers. It's three artifacts, actually. A ceramic pot, a copper tube, and an iron rod. When filled with an electrolytic solution, the pot produces about 1.1 volts, something that really got the archaeological community talking given the age of these artifacts. At 2,000 years old, it's most certainly surprising that there was actually this kind of tech during that period. Naturally, scientists are at a loss as to what the so-called battery was used for, since there really was no evidence of electricity being a part of life in present-day Baghdad. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So, here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Maine Penny This is the name given to a tiny coin discovered in Maine in 1957. As you'd imagine, this was a bit of a surprise given both its size and deteriorated nature that would have otherwise made it impossible to spot on the ground, let alone in the dirt. Initially, scientists believed that the penny was a 12th century British coin, but a closer inspection made them walk back on that. 
As it turns out, it actually was a Norse artifact, minted between 1065 and 1080, according to the University of Oslo. While knowing the origin was certainly a step forward, it brought up more questions than answers. Kind of like, how exactly did this coin end up on the coast of Maine? Distant past Norse travelers didn't reach the U.S. in the period that the penny dates to. Or maybe they did, in which case it challenges everything we know about the first contact between the old and new world. See you all next time!